Hello, my name is Jay Yoakum. I'm a field service engineer for the field service group. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Motion Sensor 4000. The Motion Sensor 4000 comes in two versions, a single non-redundant chassis and a single track redundant chassis. The single track redundant unit is five inches shorter than the single track non-redundant unit. Therefore, it might be the best product for replacing legacy equipment, i.e. 525s, 660s. The Motion Sensor 4000 can also be a simple predictor, but as a simple predictor, there is no daxing and no preemption. Your outputs are your XR and your island. Your inputs can be vital control, UAX, or an out-of-service input. Another great feature about the Motion Sensor 4000 is that we utilize the same CPU and track card out of the GCP 4000 system. Now let's take a look at the front panel indication. When you look at the CPU card, it scrolls across Motion Sensor 4000. Now this is where it can also scroll across error messages that you would then look up in the manual. Coming down here, to our number three. Number three is the M1XR. Now when looking at the indication of our inputs, outputs, our XR, our prime, our island, it's just like looking at a relay. You're basically looking to see if it's up or if it's down. At this time, what we're looking at is the XR is up, our prime is up, our island is up, the crossing is fully operational and no trains are present. When looking at the indication of the track card, we see three parameters scrolling across the display. X, I, and Z. X is EX, Z is EZ, and I is the envelope or Z level of the island circuit. When you're looking down at the end of the cation, the first thing we see is prime. Prime is your approaches. Prime also has the ability to time out if the unit stops seeing motion or EZ becomes steady while in the approach, Prime will time out to recover the crossing. Next, we come down to the motion indication. Motion indication, when train activity is present, this will flash. Next, we come down to the island indication. Uh, if the island indication is lit, the circuit is up. Then we come down to our outputs and inputs. Again, if they are lit, the circuit is up. If they are dark, there is no voltage present or they are not assigned in the program. Now we're going to talk about programming the Motion Sensor 4000. Uh, you'll notice there's no display on the unit, so we made this capable of being programmed by the select and navigate push buttons. If you're going to program the unit by the push buttons, I recommend you get the quick reference guide. Let's program the unit using the select and navigate button. Hit the select button. Now you can scroll through your main menu options. There's program, calibrate, out of service. Next would be versions. Versions tells you what software versions are inside of the unit. Train warning time. You get one train warning time in the unit. A test. And then back to the program. Now we're going to go into the program menu. Click the select button. The first option that you will see is the approach frequency. If we want to change this, we press and hold the select button. Now note that the first time you put a parameter into the unit, it will scroll across a display test. So just let it run its display test, verify that all the characters are as they should be. And after it finishes the test, it'll ask for a confirmation. When it asks for a confirmation, just press and hold the select button. It'll say pass. Now you can change the parameters in the unit. So if we wanted to change away from 285, the select button now becomes down. The navigation button becomes up. So we can now scroll through the parameters, and find the frequency that we want to assign our approach. So we'll just leave it at 285. We'll press and hold the select button. It's now telling us that it's going to set the approach frequency to 285 hertz. We just hit the select button to accept. It'll say wait. 
and then done. Another option to programming the unit, if you're not a fan of using the push buttons, is to use a laptop with the DT software loaded on it. Okay, you've got your DT up. Now we want to get to the programming section. So you come up here, programming, classic DT, and up comes the programming page. Click next, next. Now is your main programming page. Uh, the first thing we'll need to do is set the approach frequency. We'll set that to 285, update. The next thing we'll need to do is to choose bidirectional for our application. And next, last but not least, we will need to set an island frequency. While we're here on the program page, let's go ahead and look at some of the other options. This is where you would change it from a motion sensor to a predictor. These are some of the more advanced features that we brought over from the GCP 4000 line of product. And this is your site page. And with that, we are now ready to calibrate the unit. Now that programming is complete, we'll need to calibrate the unit to field conditions. So we'll need to go to the calibration page. Now that you're on the calibration page, you'll need to calibrate the unit by clicking GCP Cal and start. After it has completed this function, you will have an EZ and EX. Next, you will need to calibrate your island. We will click on the island calibration. Now we will need to put a hardwire shunt down. And for this application, we're going to calibrate the island at 0.12 sensitivity. So you would need to put a hardwire shunt 10.5 feet past the received connections. Once you have your shunt down, click the start button. Once the calibration is complete, remove your shunt. Now the system is up and ready to watch trains. Let's look at the self-diagnostics of the system. If the unit goes into trouble, you would simply come to the system diagnostics banner, click on that and hit view system diagnostics. Now you have two error codes. Well, instead of looking these error codes up in a manual, you just simply click on them. When you click on the error code, it gives you a cause and it gives you some things to check to fix the situation. Another feature of the unit is the out of service option. If your unit is in trouble and you need to recover the gates, first get track time and then come in and touch the screen. Come down and click out of service and now the out of service menu option comes up. Take GCP out of service. This will take your approaches out of service. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Now the unit is out of service and the XR is up. Therefore the gates are up and we can clear the traffic. Okay. If you wanted to take your island out of service as well, just click on out of service. Now click on take island out of service. Yes, we're sure. Now your GCP and your island is out of service. Now you can go and fix the problem. Now we'll put the unit back in service. Click on the screen, go to out of service, put island back in service, put GCP back in service, close. Now we're back in service. Another feature of the unit is the status logs. The status logs are logs of the internal decision making of the unit. To get to them, you would just click on logs, click status log, okay, more, more, and save. Save in a text format, download by date. The slide bar, you can pick the date that you want to download from. Pick your date, click OK. 
Uh, you need to have a place where you're going to save the log and click save. Now that you have saved the status log, let's go and verify the folder that we put it in just to make sure that it, everything's there. There it is. Let's open it up and there's our status log. We've talked a lot about the Motion Sensor 4000 today. If you have any questions going forward, please give us a call at 1-800-793-7233 and follow all the prompts for technical support. Thank you very much.